them. And some of us are just waiting for what we had planted in the summer to fully mature and you and, and get the most out of the you know the tomatoes or or uh, peppers or whatever other things that we might be growing yes yeah, so a lot of this is just like cleanup um organization po- possibly and just uh finishing off a lot of that harvest so f- one of the things that you could be doing that is not necessarily one of those is planting different bulbs or garlic. Garlic is a staple in our garden, and you can certainly get some from jungseeds.com. Use coupon code uh, TG23 uh, to save 10% on your orders at jungseed.com. That coupon code is 10TG23, 10TG23. Um, you can also get it from farmer's market or local garlic suppliers in your area. And it's very easy. You're going to plant it now and you're going to harvest it late June, early July next year. So keep that in mind. Also, so, the bulbs you're going to plant now and, and you'll see the beauty next spring. Right, right. And that's one thing that I always encourage people to do is think about, you know, what you can plant now, what you can prepare now to prepare for um, the spring whether it be the garlic cloves or the bulbs or even just doing something where if you have maybe perennials that you want to separate that's often done in the fall or um, you know you cut down your berry bushes your raspberries um, and then that's a a common thing I think even roses get cut back in the spring or in the fall Fall, I mean Um, so yeah and then you can do certain bug protection if you know that, you know, there might be a possibility of insects that attack your XYZ in the spring. You can wrap those things, put covers down, what have you. If you have problems with tomato hornworm, here's a good time in which um, you can uh, help uh, de- decrease the likelihood. One, uh, include bird feeders in your garden. That works Um, uh, wonderfully in order to keep that population of tomato hornworm down. Secondly, if you have been infestated with tomato hornworm, you want to take wherever your tomatoes was planted currently, you want to remove them, and you want to dig the soil, spade or till. What happens is the larva of these tomato hornworms will bury themselves or they'll bury the larva at a certain depth in the soil so they can overwinter properly, emerge next spring and do havoc again. By disturbing the depth in which this larva is um, sat in the soil, you will increase the likelihood of diminishing that population by 90%. So keep that in mind if you have the problem and try not to plant in the same general area next year as you did this year, even with the soil tillage. Right. Absolutely. And then some other things you can do is obviously rake up the leaves and you can cover the garden. This this might be, you know, now or late October, whatever it may be. But as you get those leaves, cover up your garden. Don't put them in the street. No, don't Don't put them in the street. Um. If you have a shed, if you have a greenhouse, if you have an outbuilding that is used for gardening, maybe you want to tidy that up. Maybe you want to reorganize something. Maybe you want to go through whatever. What what tools did you say in April, May, or June? I can make it through this year with this tool. Yeah. They have sales on tools in a lot of places right now. Now might be, or, or here's the other thing, and I know we're all getting up in age and getting a belt or a hat for our birthday is not the most enjoyable gift, but asking for a specific garden tool might be more of a mental boost than going, oh, another belt, wonderful, thanks. <laughs> I agree, and I do try to think of those things because I have parents who are older, they don't do much shopping online. And they, they have so many belts. And they... <laughs> <laughs> and they could go to a, uh, you know, a big, got box, big box store or a local garden center or where have you, or even like I'm an outdoorsy person in an outdoor store, and I think about things that they can actually go, go purchase. Um, so if you have a pond, you know, there's maybe auto maintenance for that. And then if you want, and most people will feed their lawn in the fall. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a huge thing. If you have the space to build a log pile in the back of the you know, the back of your garden and you feel safe doing that with critters, that is a... What, what are we be, building a log for? A log um, like a log and leaf pile for a lot of those critters Okay, to the, the beneficial yeah. insects to have a housing because in urban areas... I'm not talking about like 
um, raccoons you know, and possums. Possums yeah. talking about the benefits. You want to build a house for them too that they'll appreciate. But you're looking at in yeah. a lot of urban or very r- city areas those. Uh, locations are hard for these animals to find because many people will just scrape the the garden dry, take all the leaves to the the uh, street, and it's done until next year. So these you're destroying the habitat for these insects. There's good and bad ones that are going to habitate in these or, or, or over winter, but it's the balance. You can't have all good or all bad. You need a little bit of both. Right. Right, exactly. But if you have too many all bad and not enough good, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have to use some type of additional assistance in order to get everything back in check. Yes. Um, and then anything like hoses, uh, what's it called? Um, irrigation system. Irrigation Drain system. your irrigation yeah. system. If uh, We're going to shut ours off soon uh, because it just we don't need to use it anymore. But what you can do is if you've got an underground, we've got a main line that goes from the house all the way through the garden. And it's like six inches below ground. It's a half inch PVC uh, black pipe. And then off of that comes the feeder lines and they go up in the raised beds. This is all from um, dripworks.com. So at the end of the season, we will take and disconnect it off the house. And we have a vacuum that blows air in addition to sucks dirt. So we invert it to where it blows air and we t- duct tape it on the, the, the nozzle onto the end of the hose that was going to come out of the house. At the end of our feeder line, we have a clamp in which we can release and allows the excess water to drain out. So we run that vacuum for about 10 minutes to blow as much water out of the line as possible because if you leave it all in there, it will freeze and it will bust. So by pushing that air through, there's going to be water res- res- residual water in the drip lines. But the way we do it and the way we've done it, there's not enough there to damage any, in any of the emitters Over the winter, when we hook it up again next spring, everything functions. We're just blowing out the majority of the water. You're never going to get everything blown out perfectly. Right. So the hoses and then the water, what's it, rainwater? Rain barrels. Rain barrels, thank you. Could not think of that word. Um, Rain barrels, you know, you want to drain those. And then any sort of water, water, whatever, so that if it freezes, it doesn't cause you problems. And then if you have anything like the bird boxes, bird baths, unless you have like a heated bird bath mm-hmm. situation, anything like that, you want to make sure you, you know, get get taken in. And then um, we talked about the lawn feeding. I'm Which we're lawn. guilty of this. You know, yeah. you either you clean your greenhouse out or your uh, lawn shed out. At the end of the season, you're, you, there's a certain mentality of going, okay, it's cold, we'll deal with it in the, in the spring, and you shove everything in, and you just hope the door closes, and then you'll deal with it next spring. And that's the way we've done it before. And then next spring, on a nice warm spring day, we'll take and open it up, and everything kind of falls out, and we reorganize and throw a bunch of stuff away. But it's kind of like, okay, we're done. Almost like, uh, you know, Five o'clock, four fifty-five on a Friday, going on a three-day weekend. Let's just walk away. We'll we'll, be, we'll get it in the spring. <laughs> I I may or may not do that. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. So then there's that. If you live in, maybe you have some balcony plants or container plants that you bring in 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 the winter. You know, take care of that, or maybe you put them in a corner and kind of insulate them. Whatever you have to, you have to do there. And then there's there's some different house plant maintenance that you could do now or as it gets into winter, but whether it be to feed those house plants, um, separate them, check for any sort of bugs or or problems, things like that. A lot of times, you know, when people do certain inside outside jobs, they do inside jobs at the same time, even something like cleaning their windows. Um, it becomes a a habit routine. a routine that is part of the the two to the two things together if you have some herbs that need to be harvested and dried you can do that obviously you want to harvest anything that is out in your garden that you will utilize i remember one year we grew lemongrass that was absolutely beautiful and we brought it inside we let it dry and it was a ornamental lemongrass for us for a long time so this your your experience or your uh, jobs may vary as we have listeners all across the United States, Hawaii, and Alaska, and download uh, capabilities, and uh, we thank you for that. So this just kind of gives you a good 
uh, starting point. You can always go to your favorite search engine and, and type in jobs to get done in the month of October and my and put in zip code or however verbiage you want to uh, put it there because it's very different in Louisiana than it is in Bismarck, North Dakota. So keep that in mind. Right. And you, yeah, you might have, you might have a different job. You might even plant, I know like in the super South, they have, they use this time to plant plants that they couldn't grow during the summer because right. it's too hot. Right. So again, your mileage may vary. Well, summer's over, Holly. Uh, fall was just last week and you have forgotten about the lawn, but the kids are in school. So you need to tighten that lawn up before winter hits. Otherwise you're going to have problems next spring. Yeah, just because it's fall, we don't want to forget about our yards. Those Japanese beetles, they may be gone, but they're not far. Not only did they feast on your roses and berries this summer, they laid eggs in your turf so that you can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Phylum Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granular that specifically targets scare pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate it into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but it's the only non-chemical choice that effectively controls grubs. And the best part about it, it's non-toxic to bees and other pollinators, the beneficial ones, so you don't have to worry about Grub Gone toxifying their world and killing their hives off. You can get your hands on some Grub Gone at grubgone.com or visit the company at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. For more information, please visit the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com.